Hey guys, welcome to my channel Lord of the Law. My name is Pratik Verma from Law Center 1, Faculty of Law, University of Delhi. In last video, we completed preamble and in today's video, we will start with the introduction of fundamental rights. And before that, you can subscribe to my channel and you can also follow Lord of the Law on Facebook. Links are given in the description box. Now, let me tell you a story. When I went to school in childhood, I needed some money. That to rupees 20. Because I had to buy trump cards. You might be knowing what RUM cards are and I knew very well that my parents won't buy me. In fact, they will scold me like anything if I tell them to buy trump cards. Reason? It was considered a bad manner and I knew that they might think that it's the first step of betting and gambling. So I knew that they are not going to buy me trump cards but I had to buy it and many of my friends already had trump cards. Then I had three options. See, first is father's trouser, second is Almira, and the third is temple. Now, which is the most easy area from which money can be picked up? See, most easy area is temple hai, khula pada rehta hai. Though I prefer this route, trouser mein kya karna hai? You just put your hand and bring out the money. In Almira also it's easy, there was a key and I knew where the key was. But I still didn't prefer Almira. Or temple ke taraf to dekha bhi nahi. Reason kya tha? Father's trouser was easy to manipulate. Almira is difficult to manipulate. First of all, I'll find the key, open the Almira, and while opening the Almira, it will make some sound, isn't it? So it was risky, and I avoided it. Temple was open, available, but I never took this route. In fact, I never saw on the temple's money. Reason? This money was sacred. After all, I had to clear exams also, na? So, nobody will see if I take money from father's trouser. But God will see if I take money from temple. And he will see me in the exams also. So, this was the area which was sacred. Yes, trouser was the most easy. And I used it. Almira was relatively difficult. I avoided it. Categorization done. Ab ye ban gaya aapka constitution. This temple is part 3 of the constitution which is fundamental rights. This Almira is constitutional rights. And father's trouser is ordinary legal right or statutory right. The way we had 3 sources of money, there are 3 sources of rights. One set of rights which are mentioned in a specific part of the constitution that is part 3 which is called fundamental rights. Iske baad, there are some rights which are mentioned in the constitution but not mentioned in the part 3. For example, right to property, right of interstate trade, commerce and intercourse. These are the rights which are mentioned in the constitution but outside part 3. These kinds of rights are called as constitutional rights. Matlab ye hai, every right given to you by the state in the constitution will be called as constitutional rights. But constitutional rights which are mentioned in part 3 are called fundamental rights. In short, every fundamental rights are constitutional rights, but all constitutional rights are not fundamental rights. And see, every right is not given by the constitution directly. There are some rights which are given to you by parliament. These rights are called as ordinary legal rights, also called as statutory rights. For example, you have been given right to food. It is given to you as a right because there is a law called as Food Security Act. Similarly, you got right for unskilled labor. Aap hak se kaam maang sakte ho, under man rega. These are the law which are giving you some right. And the rights given to you by the law of parliament is called as ordinary legal right or statutory rights. Or ye bhi law hai. Law means something which has legal backing. Law ka matlab it's an act of parliament. Now, see, there are three types of rights. Ordinary legal rights, constitutional rights, and fundamental rights. If the way I wanted to manipulate money, if a state wants to manipulate your rights, a state will be able to manipulate or change or reduce which of your rights? It's ordinary legal rights. Can state not declare that as of now, you are getting 100 days of manual work, now you will get 90 days of work. And all it takes to declare it is a new law or amendment in Manrega. By Manrega, I amendment kar do, naya law ban gaya. Similarly, Food Security Act 
it says that you will get food at this price and the price which is highly subsidized price. Tomorrow, if state want to increase the price, it will only require a new law. This ko change karna sabse jyada asaan hai. Because the process to do is very simple and the majority required is also simple. Now tell me, can state bring change in constitutional right also? Jaise right to property etc. mein kya state change la sakta hai? Yes. As I said, I could have taken money from Almira also, but it was difficult. To change these rights, Parliament requires amendments of the constitution under Article 368, whose process is difficult and requires a special majority. The process which is required to change these rights, same process is used to change fundamental rights. But let me tell you, if you compare the difficulty of changing the fundamental rights are even more difficult than changing the constitutional rights in spite of same process. Reason kya hai? These rights are considered to be sacred and as such they should not be changed. Only in outmost extraordinary condition, not just for the sake of changing. And if government ever changes them, it should have full justification that why they are doing so. Otherwise, judiciary will turn it down. These rights are considered to be sacrosanct, sacred. ठीक है यहाँ तक. अब देखो इसके अलावा एक और चीज है Part Four, that is DPSP. These are the goals. Keeping in mind, the state should make law. What law should be made? What policy should be made? ये government को कौन बताता है? It's Part Four. ये बताता है सरकार को कि कौन सा law बनाना है. And I'll take it in detail when I'll take DPSP. But as of now, just remember that DPSP Part 4 tells the government its goal and what law it should make and what the policy it should make. Ye government ko Part 4 batata hai. Now tell me, this Part 3. Part 3 provisions are also telling the government that dear government, these are the rights of the people, do not crush them. सरकार को ये बोल रहा है ये राइट्स को छेड़ना नहीं है सो बोथ आर गाइडिंग द गवर्नमेंट और नॉट पार्ट 3 एंड पार्ट 4 एंड व्हाट इज दैट वन वर्ड व्हिच गाइड्स यू आपके अंदर एक चीज है व्हिच टेल्स यू दैट व्हाट इज रॉन्ग एंड व्हाट इज राइट व्हाट इज मोरली रॉन्ग इट्स कॉन्शियंस आपके अंदर का जमीर है वो आपको बताता है दैट दिस इज मोरल दिस इज इमोरल सिमिलरली टू स्टेट आल्सो देयर इज सम काइंड ऑफ जमीर Conscience of government means something which tells the government, please do this. This will bring welfare. Do that. It will bring welfare. Do not do this. It's wrong. Who will tell the government? It's part 3 and part 4. Ye dono chije keeps telling the government that please be on this path. This path leads to welfareism. And thus, part 3 and part 4 combined together are called as conscience of government. See. Why do you think we have given such weightage to fundamental rights? Isme aisa kya hai that we have considered them sacred and this right is not enjoyed by constitutional rights and not at all by the ordinary legal rights. See, unless you are given these rights, you cannot grow as human being. Ab dekho ye rights kya hai? Right to equality, right against discrimination, right against exploitation, right to education, right to religion, right to life. See, if you are exploited physically, psychologically or in any way, can you physically grow? No. If at the tender age of 8, 9 or 10 years, you are engaged as bonded labor or child labor and you are not given nutrition, means you are being exploited and when you are exploited, you cannot grow physically also, mentally also. It is very much required for your physical growth that you should not be put in an exploitative environment. Secondly, right to life and clean environment. Only when you have the clean environment, you can grow physically. See, if you are mentally very strong child and you are very talented, but unless you have right to get yourself educated, you cannot grow yourself intellectually. Education say you grow intellectually. And when you sit amongst the religious scholars, then you grow spiritually also. So, when you are allowed to practice religion the way you want, you grow spiritually. Kehne ka matlab ye hai that if you want to grow physically, intellectually or spiritually, then you must avail all these rights. And these are the basic rights 
without which you cannot grow as a holistic human being and if these rights are not there then there is not a point of having constitutional right the aim of all these rights are to develop a society which is fair which takes care of all aspects of you ye sare wahi rights hain to take care of your social political economical physical needs and thus help you grow inke bina the whole constitution is hollow इसीलिए इसको बोलते हैं फंडामेंटल राइट्स एंड नेवर एवर दे शुड बी प्लेड विद दे आर सेक्रेट एंड लेट मी टेल यू इन कराची सेशन 1931 प्रिसाइडेड बाय सरदार पटेल कांग्रेस पास द रिजोल्यूशन दैट सिटीजंस ऑफ इंडिया शुड गेट सम बेसिक राइट्स व्हिच शुड नेवर बी टेकन अवे इंक्लूडिंग फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच एंड एक्सप्रेशन एंड वी हैव टेकन दिस कांसेप्ट फ्रॉम यूएसए देयर इट इज कॉल्ड एज बिल ऑफ राइट्स नाउ सी फंडामेंटल राइट्स आर गिवन टू यू अगेंस्ट स्टेट मतलब स्टेट हैज टू प्रोवाइड यू ऑल द फंडामेंटल राइट एंड स्टेट कैन नॉट टेक अवे योर फंडामेंटल राइट थ्री केसेज सी एक्सप्लोटेशन इज नॉट अलाउड बाय स्टेट और इवन बाय प्राइवेट इंडिविजुअल अनटचेबिलिटी इज नॉट अलाउड इवन बाय स्टेट और इवन बाय प्राइवेट इंडिविजुअल योर लाइफ कैन नॉट बी टेकन अवे आर्बिट्ररली बाय स्टेट और इवन बाय प्राइवेट इंडिविजुअल फॉर एग्जाम्पल आप देखो जैसे जॉब है आर्टिकल सिक्सटीन to get a government job is your fundamental right now you cannot tell haldiram that please provide me a public employment you cannot claim this right against them right to equality you can ask from state for equality from private individual you cannot expect equality state is not asked to discriminate against people private people can discriminate they do discriminate and that is not illegal also fundamental rights jo mile hain aapko they are to be used by you against state they protect state from entering into your arena though they are not given to you against private individual except for three cases exploitation untouchability and right to life now see fundamental rights are not absolute except right against untouchability article 17 is given in absolute form means nobody can practice untouchability against you in any condition no if no but regarding untouchability baki you take even right to life it's not absolute state can take it away if you break the law whereby the punishment is death sentence then state will take your life and there are provisions mentioned in ipc in which an individual can take your life in private defense so right to life is not absolute absolute means something which is given and cannot be taken or reduced in any situation there is nothing to justify this right being taken away and such right is only right against untouchability now see fundamental rights are of two types one is positively worded and the second is negatively worded for example article 14 this fundamental right of yours asking state do not do this do not deny anybody equality before law and second case the fundamental right is asking to provide equal opportunity this is asking state to do something so first one is negatively worded and second one is positive command given to state so this way we can club almost all fundamental rights in two groups one which are asking the state to do something jaise ye and one which are asking the state not to do something So it's enough for this video and in next video I'll discuss article 12 that is state and make sure you have subscribed my channel and thanks for watching lot of the law meet you in the next video